So welcome to the first Bootstrap 3 tutorial. In this series we're going to be looking at creating a responsive site um, just like the one that you see on your screen right now. So what I mean by responsive is if you have a look here, as we resize the site, it still looks good on all screen resolutions. So you see here we got like a smaller monitor and then we get onto like a, ta a portrait tablet size, sorry, a landscape tablet, and then we go onto portrait tablet and then mobile. So you see, you can, it, the whole site kind of readjusts itself to fit on all screens. So um, what we can do with this is instead of creating as uh, sites used to be created, they create a desktop site, which would be really thin. It will go, if you're on a 1080 screen, it will take up like a third of your screen or so. What we do now is we create one site that fits on all screens. So before they create a site that fits on desktops and a site that fits on mobiles. and by doing this, it makes it so much easier for us to code and we get it done all in one. And also it fits all desktop screen resolutions at the same time, as well as tablets. So you can also see that the content here, you see as it's on a desktop right now, we see it all going horizontally, but as we resize it, it pushes into vertically. So now it's all stacking and it's all looking really good. And then we go on to, um, we go into portrait tablet size and we've got our navigation and everything all kind of squashing in, our jumbotron squashing in and everything. And as we push it in even further, we get this button here now for the navigation which drops down and gives us all of our links. So when we bring this onto a mobile device, in this case the Nexus 7, uh, as you can see it's all being structured vertically. The navigation is all working with jQuery and then our drop down is all working as well. So it's readjusting itself to fit on mobile. And then here in a landscape view, you can see it's readjusted itself, but the navigation is still properly visible as there's enough pixels uh, in terms of width there for the navigation. So in this series, we're actually gonna be looking at creating this site. So to create it, we're gonna be using Bootstrap 3 from Twitter. It's an open source project by Twitter. And you can just head to getbootstrap.com, link in the description or, or, bleh, link in the description below as always. Um, they have a download button on their homepage, although I'm having problems with this where it's downloading this weird zip file folder with every single file that I don't need and none that I do need. So what I'm going to do is just head to customize and then scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and hit the compile and download. Now just uh, open this. As you can see it says bootstrap, mine says 15.zip. The reason it says 15 is because I've recorded this series about 15 times. Oh, sorry, this video about 15 times and every single one of those I've had a problem. So yeah. So just open that up. And I'm just going to drag this away. Oh, one other thing I didn't show is the actual article page of our site. And as you can see it uses a panel here. And we've got a heading and a small text for the date. We've got a large image here, which of course resizes. Uh, we've got an introduction text here, and we've got a load of headings as well with paragraphs. Along the right, we've got a list of other articles. These can be recent articles or popular articles or articles that they might be interested in. You can have whatever you want on the side here. But as we bring this in smaller, you see they now stack on top of each other. So now this is underneath rather than on the side. So it's a lot easier to read like that. So as you probably noticed, this is for a text site, um, but this will work for pretty much any site. It's going to be quite useful if you're a YouTuber and you want a site for your YouTube channel. You could turn this into a bit of a blog. If a lot of people request it, I will do a tutorial on how to convert this into a WordPress theme, but um, only if people request it. So now we've got that out of the way, and we've downloaded Bootstrap. We can just drag that out of the way. Now this is that zip folder that we downloaded, and this is my root directory for my site. So what you simply need to do is just drag all of this in there and you're done. So let's have a look at the files in here. Let's have a look at CSS first. Bootstrap.css and bootstrap.min.css. This one is actually a human sort of readable one where it's kind of human readable, you can understand this. And then this one is all just along, well, this is not human readable at all. It's pretty much on one big line. It's just a big mess and it's pretty much useless to us. So if you wanted to edit the bootstrap source, use this version. If you're not, use the min.css. The min.css one is a much smaller file 
which is going to be much easier for us to send across the across the web. It will be lower file sizes and quicker to send. So you see, it's 99 kilobytes versus 117. Fonts folder. This is for our glyphicons. For so for icons, we're not going to be looking at those yet. And JavaScript, which is just our JavaScript files. We've got Bootstrap and Bootstrap.min. Same story applies here. This is the easy to read version, and this is the not so easy to read version. Right, so now, I've, now that we've had a look at the folder structure, we can just go ahead and open up a text editor. I know we're using Notepad++. I would recommend something like Sublime as well. That's really good, or that costs about $70, I believe, at the moment. Something like that, $70, $80 or something. I don't own the license, so I, I feel it's, I don't, I don't think it's right for me to teach a tutorial if I don't, under, if I don't even own the license. Although, I would like to get it soon, so maybe we can start doing tutorials with Sublime. It's much easier to look at on the i than Notepad++, although Notepad++ is a good free alternative. Um, although Sublime do have a free trial which you can try out if you want to use that. So firstly what we need to do is just save a blank file and just save this in your root directory. So just navigate to it, uh, push our free tutorial right here, and call it index.htm. And that .htm or .html is very important. This basically says it's a web page. Now I need to create another file and a blank one again in the CSS and call it styles.css. Now this is going to contain all of our adjustments to Bootstrap and our custom styling. So first off, in the index.html, Bootstrap requires uh, HTML5. A lot of what it does is HTML5. So we need to declare our dot type as HTML. Then after that, we can set HTML tags and then close off the HTML tags. What just happened there? Just disappeared. Right, okay. So just have HTML tags, close it off, head tags, and obviously close that off. Body tags, and close that off too. In our head tags, we're gonna have our usual title I want to call this bootstrap three, not four, three. Right, and then we're going to have our style sheets. So we're going to have link href is equal to css forward slash bootstrap dot min dot css rel is equal to style sheet. like that and then I'm going to duplicate this line control and D and plus plus and in this we're going to do CSS forward slash styles dot CSS for our custom styles and remove the dot min and just above the importing styles we need to include a meta tag now I'll explain this in a minute I'm just going to I'm just going to copy and paste it all in here actually that'll be easier and what this basically does is there it is. I'll put. I'll copy and paste this in the description. I'll put it on pastebin or something. Um, basically, what this is going to do is on mobile. So in modern mobile phones like 1080p or 720p. Now that is the same screen resolution as a lot of computers. So what would normally happen is is the mobile would display the desktop version of the site because it has enough pixels. But we don't want it to do that. We want it to still display that mobile version. So we use this, which will make sure that it displays the mobile version on mobile tablet version on tablet and the desktop on, on desktop. One last thing we need to do to get it set up is import jQuery and the JavaScript. So just head over to jQuery.com and if you scroll down to the bottom you see we've got the CDN URL. You can also use one powered by Google but I'm just going to use this one and paste it in there. Sorry not paste it in there. What we're going to do here is script src is equal to and paste that in there and then close it off and then slash script. And what this is going to do is import jQuery. Now you must put HTTP colon slash slash because normally what it does is it doesn't have this, it's going to have that. So if your site is a HTTP, so unsecure and it's on the internet, then it's going to give you the HTTP version. But if it's HTTPS, your site is secured, then it's going to give you a HTTPS version. So this is going to detect whether yours is HTTP or HTTPS. Now obviously our site isn't on the internet yet, so it's neither. So I've got to put that in manually. 
and then speech marks again. So I'm just going to control and D this, copy and paste it, and then for the next one we're going to have Java JS forward slash bootstrap dot JS. And that's going to import our bootstrap uh, JavaScript. So now we should be done setting it up. Now we can just give it a test. So I'm going to do h1 and then slash h1 and then go hello world. Save it and I'm going to launch this in Chrome. And as you can see here, it's not giving us the standard bootstrap, uh, it's the standard Chrome uh, headers. It's giving us the bootstrap one, so everything is working and everything's all good. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you did, hit the subscribe button and like this video and leave a comment. Uh, if you need any help with anything, uh, if you have any problems, just copy and paste your code. I'll show you here now to a site called Pastebin, uh, pastebin.com. I'll leave a link in the description. And my internet decides it's going to be slow right while I'm doing a video. It's not normally this slow. And just paste your code over here. Um, give it a paste name, make sure it's public or unlisted. And comment, comment below with the link, tell me what your problems are, and I can get back to you. It's easier if you do it this way than just say it's not working, and then I have no idea how to fix it. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.